This week on Maker Update, a giant camera arm, glowing LED eyes, chomping teeth, a chromatic chronometer, and a costume for a tape measure. Hi everyone, welcome to Maker Update. I'm Sophie Wong, coming to you from Seattle, where it's a beautiful cloudy day, may get a little rain later. Hey, it's perfect weather for crafting. I've got a ton of cool projects to show you this week, and let's start, as always, with the project of the week. Alexandra Chapel made an awesome camera arm using aluminum square tubing and dozens of 3D printed parts he designed and 3D modeled from scratch. The finished arm lets him quickly move his camera from a low angle to table height and even to an overhead shot. The sliding mechanisms operate smoothly with one finger, and the whole rig can be moved around easily on its wheeled base. Watching the assembly process in Alex's video is so satisfying. Everything fits perfectly together, and that is just a huge testament to the stellar design in this build. I love this mixed materials approach to building large projects, using 3D printed parts to join together other materials like aluminum and steel. I think this is one of the most powerful ways to use 3D printing in maker projects. You can watch the build video on Alex's YouTube channel and visit his website for files and plans. Now for some news. Last week, Autodesk made some big changes to the personal plan tier of their 3D modeling software, Fusion 360. This is the free tier that Autodesk makes available to individuals using Fusion 360 for personal projects. The changes add new restrictions to exportable file formats, number of active documents, and CAM functionality. If you're freaking out, you're not alone, but don't worry, Angusset Makers Muse has a great video explaining what the changes mean for users, and he includes some software alternatives should you need them. From Sharlin Gonda, this is the Nova Light Time Helper inspired by Animal Crossing. Sharlin made origami diffuser shapes out of paper, and they diffuse the LED lights beautifully. The lights change gradually throughout the day as a gentle reminder of time passing. You know, kind of like the sun, but I live in Seattle, so I, I definitely need to build this. Charlene is a fantastic writer, and she has great documentation for this project over on her website. Jeremy Fielding wanted to improve the fence on his table saw, and that gave him the idea to automate it. <laughs> yes! Using stepper motors, a Raspberry Pi, and a custom Python program, Jeremy built a CNC table saw. This is a super impressive build, especially knowing that this is Jeremy's first time writing code for a project. He even made a user interface for precise control. Check it out on Jeremy's YouTube channel. Stephen Hawes made this beautiful geometric face sculpture out of milled circuit boards, and the result is stunning. He used a Bantam Mills desktop PCB mill to cut all the shapes out of copper clad board and added a circuit across the eyes and forehead. The finished piece features surface-mounted LEDs as eyes and a microcontroller on the forehead. I love how the circuit actually wraps across the folds of the model, creating a dimensional circuit. Check out the full video over on Steven's YouTube channel. <laughs> I mean, look at this thing! Anne of All Trades wanted to make a gift for a friend, so she carved a spoon out of a piece of firewood. It's a great example of making something beautiful and thoughtful with simple materials and tools. She has a bunch of great tutorials about spoon carving on her channel. Check them out, it seems like a perfect fall project. Simone Yetch made a musical instrument out of teeth and xylophone keys, and the result is quintessential Simone, a quirky, clever work of art. I always find her work inspiring. Bill Duran at Punished Props used foam and paint to transform his tape measure into a grenade from the VR game Half-Life Alex. This is the first time I've seen anyone make a costume for their tape measure. And of course, the files for this project are available over at PunishedProps.com. Laura Kampf is designing and building a modern writing desk, and she made a video about her design and prototype. 
She's creating a cool folding mechanism inspired by a metal hinge, and as always, it's a clean and elegant design. I can't wait to see the finished piece. Over at Blondie Hacks, Quinn Dunkey is building a model of a steam engine, and the project will probably span many videos from planning to finished model. This will be a great project to follow as it develops, so head over to Blondie Hacks on YouTube and check it out. Quinn just finished the crankshaft for the engine, which looks awesome. So many tips and tricks this week. Over at CNC Kitchen, Stefan is experimenting with annealing 3D printed parts in plaster. This is a process where he encases the prints in plaster, then heats them past their melting point to remelt them inside the plaster. The goal is to create a stronger part once cooled. In his recent video, he explored the process with PLA and PETG, and the results are mixed, but it's very intriguing, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of these experiments. April Wilkerson shared 11 solutions for tricky clamping situations in her latest video. I really love the door jam trick. The Craftsman has a great demo of some strong glues for plastic parts, and Punish Props has a video on the best adhesives for EVA foam. You definitely want to know about these if you're making a cool cosplay or Halloween costume out of foam. And it seems like we're all upgrading our workshops these days. Adam Savage has a new video on adding wheels and storage shelves to his new sewing machine. And in Tyler Bell's latest video, he added some scrap metal storage under his work table. Bob at I Like To Make Stuff made some upgrades to his paint booth. All three of these projects are great with useful ideas for optimizing your workspace. And finally, it's almost October and I've already got Halloween on the brain. So here is a great resource for Halloween projects. It's the Monster Tutorials channel. Their latest build is about making a coffin out of foam, which looks fantastic. And their whole channel is full of tips and techniques for awesome spooky props. And that's your maker update for this week. Thanks Donald and DigiKey for having me back again. It's always fun to share the projects and makers that are inspiring me. I hope they inspire you too. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.